Be sure and tell them Large Mars sent ya. <laughs> In the 90s, we were just teeny tights. We went to movies and our bikes. We wanted to be DJs, but we were just teeny gals. So we went off to college and we remained. Hey guys, welcome to the Large Marge Sent Us Podcast, your favorite podcast where two sweetie sisters talk about their favorite flicks and sometimes TV shows from their childhood. I'm Sweetie. And I'm Sweetie. And we've got another little bonus episode for you today. Um, So we've been kind of covering TV shows that we grew up with and that we think of fondly, that are super nostalgic to us. And next on our list was Supermarket Sweep. So, this was another after-school television. I'm pretty sure it was an after-school event. What channel was it on? So Lifetime? Yeah. So, when it was originally came back, it was Lifetime. Okay. And then it was on this TV's show. PAX, it was called, which is, doesn't exist anymore. It's Not probably turned show in, network. It's probably turned into that. GSN. It was PAX. Um, but I'm pretty sure it was like this and then Shop to Drop, yep. like 3, 3.30. Yep. 3 to 3.30, 3.30 to 4 was that time frame where we was 4. I don't know. Before but, Oprah. Right. But it's like I specifically <laughs> remember coming home from school and watching it on the couch. And then mom would like come yeah. home and they'd be making dinner and stuff like that. Aww, so, <clears throat> yeah. So this show originally started in 1965, actually. And it ran for two years until 1967. Was gone until the 90s when they brought it back in 1990. Um, and that was when it was on Lifetime. And that is the version that we all know and love. So that had David Ruprecht. <laughs> Tough <laughs> last name. <laughs> it never sounded. I could never understand it. Um, he was the host. And you'll see, if you see his face, you're like, oh, yeah, the supermarket sweep guy. Um, he was the host in the 90s and 95. Then some other dude was it in the 2000s when they brought it back again. And that lasted three years, I think. So the, that was the life cycle. Mm-hmm. A supermarket sweep five years um, plus three give us a, give us a quick rundown okay. of how the game works sweetie here it goes all right so three teams get picked from the audience teams of two whatever product you're holding so say you're holding like lever 2000 and they'll be like lever Who's 2000 got the lever 2000 you're like ah but they're not even that excited so you know being a veteran of the game show circuit <laughs> I know that it's not random. There's no random on game shows except for questions or any sort of things that have to do with like you wouldn't, you would not, this is not coming out right. <laughs> you can't know the answers to any questions. Sure. So like that is not, that, that's not random. It's all by chance. But pretty sure like who they pick to be contestants are like random. Mm-hmm. Though I, actually I think the price is right is random. I, I hope think. so. Right? I hope so. That would crush a lot of dreams if yeah. it wasn't. Anyway, so these people go up. It's uh, two, uh, three teams of two. And usually it's like, oh, it's like me and my roommate who are also, we're all in the Navy. Or like, that's one we watched today. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't think that's a usual occurrence. This is me and my friend. It's just groups this too. Is, so mother, daughter, yeah. This is me friends. and my coworker. So there's yeah. a lot of like random coworkers. Sib- siblings. So I don't know like the premise it. of like, hey, Bob, like let's go and like stand outside in <laughs> line for a supermarket sweep. Because Sweetie here thinks it's all people from California. It so is. it's like you just go and wait in line and see if you can get to supermarket sweep and they let you in and like whatever. Anyways, so um, the whole premise is that by the end, you do this like big sweep and you want to incur the most amount of time to do this sweep. 
So in order to do that, you answer all these little, there's like 15 minutes of questions about groceries and brand names and word puzzles and weird things where you make barnyard noises, whether it's a pig, a cow, or a sheep. That's what we saw today. Very, very like random weird questions to incur more time to do the sweep the at big the big sweep. It's called the big sweep. And there's also these little um, mini sweeps, I think they call it, where you can, you get the question and then you have to go find the, an- the actual product in the grocery store. And then you get actual money at the end. So that the sweep, so while you want time for the sweep, the sweep, you really want to get the most money. So it's like a money and time thing, okay? So it's like the two things you're working with. So at the end, everyone has, let's say, max, like I think the most we saw was like three and a half minutes or something for this sweep. And you have your car and you're dressed in these awesome matching sweatshirts, even though your other team member, only one person does the sweep. So you're in these like matching sweatshirts, but only one person does the sweep. And you're trying to get as most money as possible. So what does it end up being really sweetie a game of strategy 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 about strategy, strategy. <laughs> i was blanking i was like yeah. shit <laughs> <laughs> what Pop is on <laughs> i was like at school i wasn't paying attention i was like oh fuck oh fuck <laughs> um yeah so it does and so you get all everyone who's watched this knows you go for the hams you go for the big hams the big meats put in the cheese get the diapers you know the hoses you get all that stuff you accrue the big (laughs) the money and whoever tallies up the most the biggest grocery bill wins and gets to go to the final sweep at the end which is three um, questions so you read a question and you find out what the clue is talking about and you find that product in the aisles and it has a little like gold like shopping cart medallion on it so you know what that it's right you grab that there's another clue on the back and so you keep reading to get to the third one and then the third one has money so if you get the final round and you get all the answers you only get five thousand dollars which i maybe seemed like a lot of money back in the 90s but you're splitting it you're splitting it and it's probably pre-tax and your tax so it's (laughs) sucks that's dumb that's super dumb um so that sucks um but that's the game and obviously it was super fun when we were little i don't know why (laughs) maybe it it harkened to our like weird grocery store okay so this is where i drew the parallel okay (laughs) so i don't know what it is about groceries and that checkout process and whatever i wanted more than anything as a little girl (laughs) to be a grocery checkout person. <laughs> My mom would like bring her gr- the groceries in and then I would pretend to check the groceries in even though they were already checked out in the store. <laughs> like I would unpack them from the bags and run them through an imaginary conveyor well, belt. I had an imaginary. And like putting in the code. I used being, our, like, mm, our old fireplace. <laughs> our old fireplace has the belts and I would put the stuff on there and put it in. So maybe it's that scene in Home Alone where he's like, maybe. I got a coupon for that and the girl, the checkout girl is like cute. She's cool. She's with it. She's hip. I don't know. It could be from that. It's just, I don't, but then I'm like, shit, is this some bullshit, like patriarchy, like bullshit ingrained into our heads that like the women got to do the shopping and the grocery shopping and all that maternal bullshit. Whoa, whoa, that's deep, that's deep. That might be the cause. Um, but it's ingrained I think I in our heads. I liked all like the buttons kind of a thing as a little kid, like stuff with buttons and you're I like, like the scanning. Well, I like the scanning, but then re- I think when we were really little and we would go to the grocery store, it would be like less, or maybe it's just like we just got a lot of produce. I just thought that was so fascinating, and I still find this fascinating. When if you are have been working at, let's say, a Shaw's or Star Market or Stop and Shop for a long time, and you memorize all those produce codes, that is awesome. So they're just like, bloop, bloop, bloop. I mean, I they got don't avocado. Have to look up anything. Four two two five avocados. Yeah. So case in point, I was at Market Basket Bananas, the other day. Bananas four zero one one, and this girl that I was in the line for, uh, like, she knew all the codes, or she didn't know the codes, but the girl next to her knew all the codes, so she must have been new. And she kept being like, every single produce item, I mean, I tend to buy a lot of produce, every single produce item, she was like, what's this? What's this? So, so were there stickers on it? No, there weren't any stickers. Oh. So I'm like, listening, whatever. I'm kind of like laughing at the girl, you know, to relax her, because I think she was really nervous because she didn't really know what she was doing. And she goes, what's this? And then the girl says it, but then she doesn't hear. And she's like, wait, what? And then the girl was busy dealing with her customer. So I had heard the code and I go, it's 4225. Because <laughs> it's avocado. It's no, we know it was like a, not an avocado. Oh. It was like something random. And she's like, whoa. She's like, you know the codes? <laughs> 
And I'm like, no, no, no. I was yeah. like, I was just listening. I, I was got like, the I'm codes, sorry. baby. I was like, I think you guys are funny or something like that. Oh. But it was, it was a good, it was a good experience. Um, that's cute. That's a cute story. <laughs> but yeah, this show, and I think that, I mean, obviously the best part is the, the, the big sweep, watching them go through the that's aisles and pick up all the stuff. It's funny. Though I do like the word scrambly, like Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, kind the of kind of games they have in the beginning. Those are kind of fun. Um, and then the last part was always so, it was exciting you know (laughs) it never seemed like enough time i hate when they figure out the clue like with five seconds left and you're like oh if they had just figured it out before then that's and Um, it's tricky though it can be tricky if you have no clue what it's talking about but i feel like the ones that we saw were pretty leading in terms of what the product was the band of soleil one was tricky yeah that was hard i mean this french word something it was protection. protection So they were like, oh, what it's hairspray that? or deodorant. So they were in the beauty aisle. Well, what, was what it? What was it? Reels. Band of Soleil is a um, sunscreen. Okay. So I, maybe, yeah, protection. I, so I would it said like a French word sunscreen. and then it used like protection. So it was clearly like something to do with protection. So they knew to go to the beauty aisle, but they just didn't. Yeah. Know Actually, what's more frustrating is when, and this was also happened in that same scene, is when they are in the right place and the camera will like zoom in on the little gold oh. medallion shopping cart and they're like, the they're, trident guy. Yeah, they're like, it's there. They don't see it. It's there. And it's so, so excruciating. Yeah. So this guy's one was like, the clue was your dentist says you should be st- strident with your brushing, so use this gum called Trident or something like that. Oh, why was he in the tooth? It said gum, and he was in the tooth. So he goes to the candy first and like gets frustrated because he can't find it. Uh, so then he was like, "Shit, it must be in the toothbrush section." Like, what the fuck? What a dummy, dummy, dummy head. So stupid. A so dummy. he lost. Didn't get the extra bonus money. Sorry, Ray or whatever your fucking name was. Um, <laughs> But, okay, so a couple questions yeah. for you. I'm just going to, okay. for you, spit em, spit listeners. What makes you do good on this show? <laughs> do well? <laughs> <laughs> that sounded funny when it came out. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Superman does good. You do well. Um, do uh, good. I mean, uh, we already said it, but the strategy. Like, it's getting the most time. <clears throat> it's running fast with that shopping cart. It's hauling in those hams, those turkeys, those diapers. But I feel like Bob and Joe, wherever it was that team that we saw, like the first one we watched, was too strategic. Like they were, they, they went didn't for have those. Enough, those other women had all that like bonus money that yeah. they got in the beginning because they got both of the mini sweeps, which I think was a big help because I didn't realize that that money that gets added on to their, bucks. yeah, it gets yeah. added on to their total. Right. So all they needed to win was like 400 by the end, no, they which was easy. Which, okay, think. which was a piece of cake. Yeah. So yeah. So really, I think it's a combination of doing well in those beginning games, right? And obviously being strategic and buying all the big hitting items. So we already mentioned these big hitting items, but it's the meats, the diapers. They didn't have this in the ones that we watched, but remember hoses were a big one. Yeah, I don't you had to like that, haul in like the five awesome. hoses. All that stuff, um, and then occasionally they have like a like a secret item, a mystery item. You find, you get that, you get two fifty. Yep. You get a big bonus blow up thing. Yeah. It rips. I love that. That's my favorite part. Ripping off the thing. Let's see how much your bonus is for. It's the super bonus, two fifty. That was ah. so exciting. Hate it when they get the fifty. Like such a dud. You're like, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's what makes. That's how I you mean, win. I mean, I think you got to hustle. There's a running and there's but lots there of are, running nothing involved. wrong with a little hustle. Yeah. So there's a lot of running involved. You can't like not can know never how pick to the fat person to go. Run. Exactly. So, you know, there's that. Um, and do you need like a cursory knowledge of like what shit costs? <sighs> I mean, like generally, I got that question right that they had. So they had like brownie mix, Mrs. Marie Callender's like orange pie or something, brownie mix, and then good humor or chocolate eclair and the question was which of these is under 350 or two two dollars two dollars and i knew it was the brownies because that's still under two dollars wow. today i think it's still around see, like see i would never be a good person to go on that show because like i don't i am gluten i have a gluten allergy so i don't buy like any mainstream things almost at all so i was going for the peach cobbler i would have oh, that would have been like five bucks what that shit's expensive marie <laughs> calendars forget, See? It, forget it. i don't know like i don't buy that yeah. stuff I mean, we need to we need and to like all my up free on stuff that. is like ten dollars so i'm sure like though if you just watch the show like repeatedly you would under like yeah. just watching the prices right i feel like i had a really solid knowledge of like how much um 
uh, what was that like vitamin thing? The like Centrum yeah, cost. Centrum like solar. I knew how much that was, yeah. and blah blah blah. So, and it was funny when we were watching it this time. So do you remember what um, year that show was from that we watched today? Ninety three. Okay, ninety three. So I don't know if it's com- It's from because it was ninety three. So you're talking about twenty four years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. That's crazy. Um, Mm. And also it was in California, which there is like regional grocery brands that aren't in some places. They're more in others. Um, But I didn't know so many of the grocery Mm. names that they said and brand names that they said. I mean, there was like a weird toothpaste brand. There was. Those might just be extinct. They might just be gone. They might just be gone. So that was like kind of funny. That was like, oh, this show is very dated in the sense that like those brands are just like not even around anymore. But then there was like Crest and obviously like yeah. Andy's mints and mm-hmm. like yeah. Band of Soleil. I mean, there. that's like still things, but um, I find the host funny and that I don't know if he wakes up every day and he's like, um, I like am the host of a fucking grocery show. <laughs> he just seems like too happy <laughs> to be talking about. He's probably groceries. on a lot of uppers. Yeah. And then the later seasons, he gets this horrible <laughs> dye job, which I don't understand why the makeup department would be like, hey. It was like, <laughs> it was jet black, you guys. The jet black hair. Like, he took the shoe polish and, was and put it in. And like, cute and, like, silver? Yeah. Like, pe- salt and pepper. Pretty sure. Yeah. Like, durable salt and pepper. Looked handsome. Looked good. Went through a midlife crisis, probably <laughs> bought a Corvette, got some 20-something girl, and also dyed his hair jet black. Like, what the it fuck? It was weird. It was like, just he, like in Father of the Bride 2, yes. where Steve Martin gets that like horrible dye just job, like that. which also our dad did. Right. Around this time. Which I think that must have just been like the time yeah. that was whatever all the guys are doing at this time. I don't know. Um, God, he weird. also was not great on line. Like, they never did seem to do any reshoots. Seemed to be all one take because uh, he made a lot of flubs. He's no Alex Trebek, let's just say. Nope. Um, so you can, he definitely slips up yeah. quite a bit. Just just a little stumble here and there on <laughs> words, which I feel like they could easily re record. So I mean, yeah. low budget. Maybe they, yeah, it's, I think it's just the budget. Low they budge. don't have the time. Um, so I read an article and I assigned Sweetie to read this article today as well, but she did not. Some people work for a living. <laughs> hey. Um, so. This article was on the AV Club, and it, it follows, it's about a guy, what it's like to be on Supermarket Suite. So this guy was on Supermarket Suite in the t- early 2000s, I think, um, but David Ruprecht was still the the host. So it wasn't that weird guy yet. So he kind of, AV Club, like, asked some questions. It's pretty funny. It's illuminating. So the, it's best, illuminating. <laughs> the best things that I <laughs> learned... <laughs> The greatest things that I learned were that originally the show used real meats. Like those were real hams and turkeys, which I thought they just They're were. all props. So they're all props, wow. which just they add um, heft to them. So they're a little heavier. But the reason they do that is because in the beginning when they used real meats, they'd be filming for so long that they would all have defrosted and they were all like smushy and bloody Ew. and the blood would get like all over the <laughs> sweatshirts and they couldn't get rid of it. So they switched to fake stuff. So all the food was fake and it was all, and if it, if it wasn't, it was all expired like way past its, its date. So the cereal would be like way old because they'd use it for the whole season. Wait, so but, but anything in all boxes the would be like actual food. Would just I be like the boxes so? of stuff. They claimed it Maybe they said it like all the it was all beauty fake. like oh, stuff and yeah. the Pampers would be not yeah like, I think yeah. so I think that that stuff was really yeah the meats definitely were well, not but funny. they were still the a little bit heavy um, and then <laughs> this other fun fact that you only got to keep the cool sweatshirts if you did not win wow. so the losers went home not with any prize money but with their sweatshirts. Um, I'd rather have that than money. I know. I just can't believe it. Like, oh, good job. You won the show. Uh, we'll need that switcher back. Right? Um, I was upset that <laughs> when for Jeopardy, they're like, here's this bag. And it was like a Jeopardy tote bag. And I was like, oh, my God, there's going to be all this sweet swag in here. I was like so excited thinking it was going to be like all this shit. And I, I open it. It's like one hat. I'm like, this is I was on Jeopardy. And all I get is a hat. Yeah. <laughs> It's pretty cool hat, wash. Though. It's yeah. a pretty cool hat, I, I will say. Yeah. I mean, um, I may or may not have gotten money. No spoiler. Yeah, maybe. Um, but so, and then this one, so what would you, like the, so Filming Jeopardy was 
I mean, the actual filming portion of it. I know you had to be there kind of early, but the actual filming portion started about like 11, 10, 30, 10, 30 mm-hmm. and then went until like four, four or five. Or five. Um, so that's I mean, five shows. So that's like six hours. Yeah. About. Um, this guy said that filming this show was like 12 to 14 hours. One episode? A no, oh, they did a bunch, a bunch. I think okay. also, but it was all just very oh, long, very uh, long day. So yeah, that's pretty crazy. Why though? I mean, the thing is, is like well, now that we have been on the game, a game show, um, how methodical it is and how it is like just so, you know, like they, the Jeopardy machine was amazing. I mean, I will say this, like they had that down to a T and we had, occasional technical difficulties that it did extend some episodes more than others but like mostly no and it was like basically was the runtime of an episode you know like yeah. extending a little bit on the commercial breaks but like it was it was yep. uh, it they've was been, beautiful you can clearly tell they've been doing that show yeah. forever so i mean so. that but that one is obviously more physical and like this one yep. yeah and they got to reset things and put all the groceries back tally up the groceries oh all that, that must be crazy yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. that okay. that makes sense that makes sense so. yeah um also i think it's funny that <laughs> this like this show is all about like spending the most money you possibly can at the grocery store and now we're like how can i almost <laughs> spend ten dollars <laughs> and you're like it's so there should be a <sighs> another a, a supermarket sweep for like lean Budget. times yeah i'm sure there is <laughs> but like it's just such a ti- sign of the times like obviously this was a show in the 90s where nothing was really wrong and we yeah. were like yay groceries spend, spend money Funny. Yeah, I had this like amazing idea for a sketch that was like you put someone from like the Depression era onto the show. His name's like Ebenezer Blunt, and he like guesses everything for, like as a penny or ten cents, and he lowballs everything so much because he like doesn't understand inflation and like the new cost of things, and then he just passes out when he knows like how much stuff is. <laughs> Or he like goes to the vegetable section and or his whole like smelling the good apples. tomatoes. He's like, this <laughs> one will cost about a dollar. Um, I have sweetie confusion for me. I always used to be like, why does no one ever get the vegetables? Because <laughs> they always look so nice behind. It's always like behind the host guy. All the like the shiny vegetables. I'm like, why is he making the vegetables? And you were like, because those don't cost a lot of money. <laughs> and I was like, oh, right, 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 right. Get the dried porcinis in the produce section. Those are expensive. Yeah, didn't Avocados. Think didn't think of that. <laughs> well, probably wasn't an, uh, an increase back well, then. Well, California too. Yeah. It's, it's much closer to the border. Uh, um, we also watched a really funny SNL skit that you can find on YouTube with Melissa McCarthy as like a crazy contestant really funny she grabs she like goes through like and she's off and she's going to the employees only section and she like goes through the doors and comes out with a giant leg of bee like just like puts so it in funny. the cart it was great it was great Her highly recommend pageant. Pageant. Sh- highly recommend watch yeah. that immediately and so the announcer on this show well the first season anyway was johnny gilbert who is the announcer of jeopardy and when um, so when we were filming Jeopardy a couple weeks ago, he like talked to the audience a lot. He was so good and like loved to chat with the Such audience. Such a sweetie. So he told he's a the, he's supermarket the club. sweet. Yeah, totally. Told sweetie club. He stole. He told a supermarket sweep anecdote. If you remember it, you probably mm-hmm. remember it better than I do. I the woman who fell with her car and her pants fell yeah, down. Her pants like fell down and they had to keep taping yeah. and they were just like, oh, and like, <laughs> I forget what he said, but he just remember it. he'll never forget that day of but shooting. But he was so good because I, f- was it the other, the newer season? It wasn't Johnny Gilbert. So someone else was doing the calling. Just like, on occasion. Part, yeah. I don't, it was just, I mean, he wasn't always the announcer like oh, he, he was for jeopardy oh. and i think he'd like hopped around a little but bit, he was but. really good so when they do the play-by-play of the actual shopping yeah. part like yeah. johnny gilbert he, he's coming it. up with like all these puns and stuff. although i bet maybe he records that yes. after yes. okay yeah no, that's definitely. that's it's clear. not spur but like i wouldn't even put it past him if it was spur because probably, the guy well, is probably writers but he's so smart yeah and he's great. such a good announcer and like amazing. so yeah when we were at jeopardy they did a special i don't know if we're allowed to say this but the he won uh, a Guinness World Record for being the longest running sh- uh, and TV announcer, I guess. 
So it was for Jeopardy. So he won his war and he got yeah. to like the little Guinness Book of World Records guy. I had like his little suit on. It was cool. Yeah. Um, He's 90 years old. Oh my God. So, I mean, it's, or they don't even know actually. They're not even like, what? yeah, no, all the staff, they're, they're like, we don't even know. We think he's 90. And what, I was like, what oh did my it God. say in his bio? Yeah, crazy. But um, awesome guy, like such awesome people on that show. So it was, it's, I mean, game shows are cool. I'm just gonna say <laughs> they really bring me back. One, um, they really bring me back to. They are awesome. Days and they're of being just like, cozy. Also, like such a happy experience. I mean, I, I would hope if anyone has been on Supermarket Sweep, like, feel free to let us know. But at least this, mine was like crazy happy, and I just feel like everyone is so happy and pleasant to be there. The staff is really nice, and it's just like I don't know. It's just like a really happy setting. Okay, so two things. So Johnny Gilbert is 92, according to 92? IMDb. 92. Um, also, <laughs> trivia says did not return to announce the PAX version of Supermarket Sweep in 1990 because of the residuals the network was paying him. What does that so mean? does that mean he was paid? So he, so he didn't reruns. need to do it. Yeah. So he didn't like he didn't need, need to do to. it. I guess I don't know. Good but for whatever. him. He's sweet. Um, also, I really think we should resurrect our idea of being contestants yes. for Halloween. Okay. I so think we need to try harder. This was a big idea of ours. Yeah. Like okay, so we can't wait until the last ago, minute. We can't. We were going to what party was that? Just. Was it the Wayne's World one? No. Yeah. Was it? Yeah, I think so. No, 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 no. It was the one I went to that bar. I don't want, yeah. And I was I Han was like Solo a, and a I like print, went. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So we were like, okay, we're going to become, we're going to be supermarket suite contestants. So we just need matching sweatshirts of the same color. We'll like, we'll, we'll go to Salvo or Goodwill. Like how hard is it to get a crew neck sweatshirt both in red or blue or whatever? Pretty Apparently, hard. Very hard. <laughs> We, we always wait them. until the last minute, and yeah. I feel like if you just casually yeah. look we'll, throughout we'll the play. year, you find something. So but we're going to do it. Also, I wanted to go a step further and get like a blow up yes. something. So that would also be planning. And too. then one of us carry and that around in a mini shopping cart. cart. Okay, we're going to do it. It's going to be the best costume <laughs> ever. <laughs> it is. We're going to win so many awards. It's going to happen. So we just need to right now get the matching sweatshirts, the blow up thing, and the, the mini. The, I mean, we get the mini shopping cart like. Anytime, anytime. Toy like, Story, Toys R Us. Target. Yeah, yeah. Done. Okay, done. Okay, sorry. We're just thinking aloud. <laughs> planning, planning. Just look for us the next. in October, next season. Yeah. But anyway, do you like Supermarket Sweep? Do you want to talk about it? <laughs> next time we'll talk about Shop Till You Drop. What? Which Don't, is make a whole Don't make promises. Don't make promises. I want to watch Legends of the Hidden Temple or Nick Arcade. Good so one. Good Don't one. make promises. What about the Whammy one? <laughs> what about Lamb Chop? Just throwing oh, out. We don't need to do just game so shows. Good. Um, there's a lot to do. There's a lot to do. Gummy bears. <laughs> there's so many <laughs> gummy bears bouncing here and there and everywhere. High adventures that's beyond compare. They are the gummy bears. They are the gummy bears. That part at the end. It gets like, really high. Yeah. Uh, that's good. Magic and mystery are <laughs> okay. part of their history, right, along you. with the yes, secret sir. Remember? of Remember gummy bears. Juice. <laughs> Sorry, the the beginning is my favorite part. The rule is one bar. It's a very like intense song. <laughs> I know the guy like goes for it. <laughs> Who is sing that? Okay, well he must do other part. ones. He yeah. must do other ones. Well, I know. We're, we're not going to pull do. it up. I'm just okay. for my own reference. But thank you for listening to this app bonus app. Uh, join us again later sometime when we record another episode. Follow us on Twitter at the Sweetie Club and on Instagram. At Large Marge sent us. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.